You have to know what you want to do and who you want to be by 23 or you're... There's too much pressure on kids right now. It is. It's a lot of pressure. And social media doesn't make it easier, too, because they're seeing, like, people that are successful and they're like, yeah, well, some of those people have been putting in 10 years. Welcome to Trevor Talks Too Much, the show where I just... Talk sometimes to another person, sometimes to Jamie, sometimes just to myself. Uh, I'm your host, Trevor Everts, a master baker, mythical soft boy, mortal enemy of Shane Robert Top. Coming for you, Shane. Today, I spoke with Skate, uh, also known as Nathan Maloli. He's a musician, singer, songwriter, rapper. Um, and we talked about all sorts of stuff. We talked about uh, the pressures of growing up in the digital social media age, the pressures of having to be successful by a certain point in your life or feeling like you're a failure. Um, and, you know, some other fun stuff like our favorite movies and shows, as always. Uh, it was a great time. Uh, I actually, I hate, because this reminds me, the whole grind set community, I think is really funny in an ironic way. Like, you know, like, the, like here's the keys to success. Like Oh, I was like, gr- I was like, is this another thing I don't know? But I no, do know. I you do know, know, like the grind set, right? Yes. Yeah, it's like mindset, the grind, you know. And uh, there's some really funny jokes because it'll be like, here's like, here's my like Sigma grind set. Wake up at three in the morning, my pants, like, <laughs> like uh, ponder success for four hours, eat breakfast, uh, walk around the block, listen. It, 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 there, there's some really funny jokes, but then there's the people that are actually like the Sigma grind set people. And it, I hate it so much. They're the worst people. I just like the the whole like, oh my God, like here's what you have to do. Like here's my five keys to success. So like here's how to be a millionaire by age 21. Here's how I did it. Like I hate that. I don't like it either, especially because it's like, okay, that worked for you. But like I, I'm i not waking up at 5 a.m. I'm not doing like, these random things that they're all doing. Yeah. They're like, oh, you can totally do it except this. And you know how many of those people started with money? Exactly. All of them. No, it's so funny. I'll see like these pages pop up on like my Instagram explore page sometimes. There's like success motivation posts. Like, did you know that when Leonardo DiCaprio is 14, he was broke and now he's a multimillionaire? You know how he did that? Hard work. And it's like, well, okay. So, how does that help me? Do I just have to be Leonardo DiCaprio? Do you have any? feasible tips i don't know i hate that whole culture and it was funny when we were talking about it today like say like it just reminded me of that and how like it's so funny though i love fate i love doing it ironically yes i love talking about the sigma grind set ironically because i am a sigma and i do have the grind set and i grind and hustle every day but in an ironic way so if you're out there and you grussel like i do that's I don't know. Grussel. I that's also Grussel is a grind great word. And hustle. You that's got the a... grussel. You gotta have the grussel and the grind set, Jamie. You don't get it. You're just not a Sigma male like I am. I am not. You're not a Chad Sigma male grussler grinder like What I... would you do if someone called you a beta? I would kill them. <laughs> in a video game that's my favorite thing uh because like twitch has really like bad like or twitch like there's like tos stuff um that like you can't like threaten violence against anyone and so there's so many streamers when like someone's pissing off they're like oh my god i literally wish you would die in a video game or i'm gonna kill you in a video game they just (laughs) add in a video game at the end of their threats Because it makes it so that they can't get bad for it, banned for it. So I always do that now when I'm playing games. I'm like, oh my God, I literally wish you would die in a video game. That's anyway. hilarious. But on to... Skate! Real life. Skate! Skate! One more time. Skate! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody, welcome Skate. Thank What's you up? for being here, How man. Thanks for having me, Do you want to give like a quick little intro of yourself? To the to the people, yo, what's up? It's Skate. That's that was perfect. <laughs> Very well done. Uh, you're a musician yep. mainly by trade. I would say you make a lot of music. You are a rapper, but also recently you've been doing a little bit of uh, delving into some kind of pop punk alternative style mm-hmm, of stuff, yeah. which I love. You listened to it last day on earth. Yes, I did. I actually listened to it a bunch today, just like while I was working. Awesome. Um, I'm a big I'm a big pop punk fan. I feel like who's your favorite? Who's my favorite? Pop punk. Uh, 
probably falling in reverse. Okay. Maybe. So, okay, you diving really deep. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like I missed out on a little bit though, like, because I'm 22. Oh, okay. And yeah. so I feel like when all of pop punk was like really popular, I was a lot younger. Yeah, it would have been what, 2000. Three, five. Five, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like pretty young. And then like, so I hit my like kind of emo punk stage like a lot later in my okay. life where I was like, oh, here's all these really old songs that I really like. And I never Yeah, I think I was to. what, like middle school? It would have been like middle school. Yeah. Yeah, when Mike Cam and all, all of them were coming out. Yeah. Do you, um, so like making the, since it's kind of like, I feel like making a comeback, like, mm -hmm. um, in like the population, is that kind of why you like switched over to a little bit more of that? Or is it just something um, that you really like? It was more kind of just like, experimenting like uh you know who rook is yeah, so yeah. rook drums for mgk yeah, and, yeah and he's like a really good friend of mine we've been friends uh in la for like four years now yeah and um but we had never really like made music yeah and when we got into the studio he kind of was you know obviously like he can play actually guitar too he can play like yeah everything yeah um he's like you should just try like doing what you already do you know, which was, you know, mostly rap. Yeah. And uh, do it over live instrumentation. Yeah. So he came in there and was playing guitars. And we actually started by doing like a lot of remixes. Yeah. And um, that's where it started. Like we we remixed like Sweet Emotion. We remixed yeah. the, a lot of crazy pop punk yeah. songs that yeah. probably will never come out. But that's yeah. how it kind of started. Yeah. And then um, we started diving in. We're like, yo, we should do a whole project. I think our first song that we were really like, okay, this is fire is um pages okay. the one we dropped yeah um on the last day on earth and yeah. and uh he was kind of like yo we got to do like a whole project like yeah. this and so that's kind of how it how it started dude you had good charlotte on the album yeah that's it was crazy sick. it was crazy we were just even talking about like just like some of these gatekeepers that were in that scene yeah so quickly you know, to 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 be like yo I love this you yeah. know and and get on it like even Derek um when i sent him the shooting star record uh it was already finished like the shooting star record was done yeah um i had the hook written and he was like uh i was like do you want to like want me to open up a verse or something yeah. for you and he was like i just want to sing the hook yeah and i was like okay cool so yeah. i opened up the hook and he he did his thing so it was really cool just to to have like the support even the good yeah. even good charlotte joel and and Benji, like, we went into their studio at the Madden studio, and, you know, they, they treated me like family when we yeah. knocked out. We actually have two songs, so. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, there's probably going to be another one coming. Oh, yeah, that's exciting. In the future, yeah. A little unreleased. Yeah. Wow. I'm, um, I'm excited. <laughs> but it was cool. It was cool. It was really fun. That's sweet. So when, so when did you move to L.A., and did you move to L.A. to pursue music? Yeah, I moved to, so originally from Omaha, Nebraska, yeah. and then I moved to L.A., shoot like seven years now i think wow yeah when i was 19 so i'm 26 now yeah seven years wow wait when did i move to la i i didn't know you then what uh, Jamie, <laughs> why don't you know this <laughs> what the heck i'm gonna guess it? 2019 Tw no it's 2018 where oh. are you originally from i'm from idaho Oh, okay. Boise, well, Idaho. Well, oh, Boise? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sick. i've been over there yeah it's pretty fun it's a boise state fan uh oh yeah big yeah. time frick u of i uh i mean i was like <laughs> I, I grew up in Boise, so like everybody there's like a Boise State fan, and that's like also are they? the only yeah. Well, it's also Do, are they pretty like they like because you know like certain states and stuff they're like uh we don't really like like you know that like Nebraska football like a lot of people don't like Nebraska football really even though there's a lot of people that do yeah a lot of people just don't like Nebraska football like they'll yeah they'll like different. Yeah, I think in Boise, it's because uh, there's no like professional sports teams. Same with us. So it was like Boise State football. Plus, we used to be like really good like 12 years ago. We were like really yeah, good. Yeah, really good. And so. And the blue turf. Yeah. Y'all you know, yeah, sent, yeah, sent, yeah, yeah. sent a message with that one. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it was like going to live sporting events. Like, that was our NFL, was going to Boise State football games. And like, they were good. And so it was fun. So I think like, I don't know, a lot of people are Boise State fans. There's some that aren't. There's some people that are like U of I fans. But. I'd say there's a lot of... So you like it out here? Difference? Yeah, yeah. Change? I hated it when I first moved here. Really? Yeah, it was like, I don't know. It's just, just like, so hard. Just trying to like fit into different groups or stuff? Yeah, or? it was like I didn't have a ton of friends out here when I first moved out. I didn't yeah. know a lot of people, so it felt like very lonely. But For sure. Once I started working here and like made some friends and like now I have some really cool people that I know and uh, I really love it. It's a lot of fun. But yeah, I moved out in 2018, so I would have been 19 as well. 
because, or I moved out right before my birthday. So I moved out here when I was 18. So about three, four years. Four yeah, years. four years. Yeah. Cool. Pretty crazy. It's weird to think about. I it's think almost I, like a, you know, as I step in, excuse me, uh, to seven years, you know, I don't, I'm probably, you probably feel the same way, but it's like, it, it kind of raised, you know, me as from, you know, Omaha raised me obviously till 19 but like yeah from 19 to like i feel like 30 yeah i'm not 30 yet but um that's like a whole new like learning experience yeah, too especially if you leave it. your you know leave your hometown and stuff so i feel yeah. like i learned a lot on my own too like just yeah. being out here and trying to like yeah you know get in where you fit in and yeah and, no uh, for sure 100 percent. i mean like growing up in idaho it was a lot of fun and i like really loved it but being out here i've learned so much yeah. like just and experiences and like struggling and like trying to like you know find a place here in LA but it's fun I love it I, I can't imagine I'll be going in and discipline because yeah. you could go out every night if you want to oh yeah that's why every I'm single very night. thankful that I am a degenerate scumbag gamer <laughs> um so what was it like growing up in in Nebraska right now I feel like I have um like like you said we don't have a professional team yeah there's not too many um really really popping artists out of the city so there's a lot of opportunity to yeah. to grow with the city and like anytime i go back um there's always love like i can always do a show yeah you know that's so cool and um so that's good but growing up um i played basketball yeah so yeah yeah that Baller. was like my first love yeah. yeah same um actually guitar was it's crazy i just found out like um i remember playing guitar when i was uh I think like 10 years old. Yeah. I was taking guitar lessons. Yeah. And my mom just reminded me of it um, because she had sent me a a text and she was like, yo, you know, like you were, when you were playing guitar, um, the, the teacher said that your hands were too small and you got like really, really mad. And I was like, you know what? I remember playing guitar, (laughs) but I don't remember why I quit. Yeah. And she was like, yeah, you were really upset that the teacher had said like, uh, your hands were too small. So right after that, I guess after 10, that's when I like put the guitar down and then started playing basketball. Yeah. And really started like, I wanted to, man, I wanted to play professional basketball. Like that yeah. was my dream. And um, then when I was like 15, I dove back into the music. Yeah. Started doing a lot of like just writing lyrics to like upcoming beat or beats that were hot yeah. at the time. And um, that's when I really started like, all right, I kind of like this music. Yeah, like I want to. I want to know what teacher tells a ten year old. You know what I mean? That's that their where my hands mom, that's are too was, small. I'm it's like, a yo, child. Of yeah. course, their hands are small. What like, do you mean? You just gonna turn me away like that? <laughs> like you just know you're like, yeah, you no, know, your hands aren't gonna yeah. get any bigger. Like, how are you gonna too say small? that? Like, and I'm I'm over there like, I guess you're right. That's like, you so know? stupid. And just quit. <laughs> just pick. Just put it down. No, how, what, that doesn't make Isn't any that, sense, bro. I That's know. Insane. She was like, "You were really, really upset." I was like, "Yeah, I bet I was." That's <laughs> insane. That's so funny. No, I was a I was a basketball player too. I, uh, yeah, I mean, at a small, you know, Idaho school, yeah. so nothing crazy. But I, I had a I had a rough relationship with basketball my junior and senior year of Why high school. It? I just had a, oh no, <laughs> wait, I, <laughs> I can say this. I've said it, but I just had a negative experience with a coach. Just, oh yeah. It's always, it's, 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 I don't think he listens to this. It's mad political. <laughs> it was weird. It's political too. Yeah, it is. And it was just, it was unfortunate, but it was kind of like after I finished high school, I was like, I don't want to go to college. Were you like a shooter, dribbler? I was a point guard because okay. I grew late. So I was like pretty short for most of high school. And then kind of around my junior year, I sprouted up. So then like by the time I was a senior, I was probably like six foot two. And then oh, I, wow. like, I just stayed playing point guard. Yeah. I was always like, I'm six foot, but um, I was probably six foot when I was a junior too. So yeah. I was always like, oh man, I might grow in college. Yeah. Like, never happened. No. <laughs> Killed my dreams. I was yeah. like, if I could just be a couple more inches tall. Yeah. Man. I definitely played a very like Magic Johnson-esque like point forward right. where I was like, I was dishing it and then like I would just go bully. Because it was, it was always funny playing in like 2A Idaho basketball. Like, the teams were two st- two A. Two A is like the divisions that we have. So like five A is like the biggest school. So one oh, okay. A is the smallest school. So we were like a gen- like a pretty small school. Because okay, we went by like A, B, C class or class A, class B. Yeah, class okay. A. So it's like kind of the same thing. So we were like second from the bottom as far as size. So there wasn't like a lot of really good basketball teams. 
And so whenever it was like matching up, it was like they would either put like a big guy that wasn't as slow on me because I was taller or they'd put like their point guard on me. He was usually like five foot six or five foot seven. Oh, so you could like shoot over top people. of him. So like take, him to, take him down. Yeah, take him down to the block, whatever. <laughs> but, right. Yeah, I miss playing basketball. Do you still like play at all? Nah, I yeah. haven't. Yeah, I what I did like a couple of years ago. I was in like just a little like outdoor league, yeah, you know, and that was fun. Yeah, um, I want to get back into it though. So it's a good I. workout too. Yeah, it's like really when I good. when I had stopped for a minute and went and did it like, and after like the first like couple of days, I'm like, damn, like my whole body is yeah. sore. No, you know? I did the same thing. It had been like a year since I like played like an actual like pickup. You game. forget how like yeah. I was like up and down the court a couple of times. I was like, oh my God. So, like, how did I just run in high school? Yeah. I just running up and down. Up but and down. You played in college, right? Yeah, I played in college for a year. Okay. Awesome. And I went to, um, it was like a D2 college. Yeah. It was a smaller school, yeah. a private school in uh, Nebraska. And uh, it was also uh, performing in art school. Okay. Because I was still doing music and I was like, yo, like, I want to still like kind of be tapped into that. Just, yeah. You know? Yeah. And um, so they actually, it's crazy. They had a podcast room. Yeah. And um, I would go after hours to the podcast room and record on like the setup in gar- on like garage band. Yeah. But it wasn't really set up for like music. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so it came out a little different, but it was cool because um i then got a little bit of notoriety like at the college yeah so when you know when when you went to college or i went to culinary school okay so not really (laughs) well well in the colleges you know they have they'll have like a budget where they bring artists that are popping and like you know the school will have like a homecoming and they'll have a popping artist yeah 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 and they would always let me be the guy that would open up so that was really cool oh that's awesome so i started gaining a lot of traction in in Hastings, which was two hours outside of Omaha. And then I'd already kind of like put my little imprint in Omaha, obviously. So that was kind of cool and how I started just like gaining little fans here and there, like in the city and in Nebraska. Yeah. So what, like, what was the kind of jumping point? Was it not until you moved to LA that you kind of like blew up and got big? Or was it like a moment that it kind of happened? Yeah, it was a crazy moment. Um, And it's crazy how it all lined up too. So I... I had just finished my first year of college and I was decided I, I just wasn't really like as passionate as I as I was before with basketball. Yeah. And I was starting to fall more in love with the music. Yeah. And uh so I was like, you know, I had to make a decision. I was like, ah, I'm gonna I'm gonna just quit. Yeah. Quit school. And I went back home and I was staying with my mom. And um that was at the same time Vine was like really at a peak. Yeah. So yeah. Um, Jack and Jack. Have you heard of Jack and Jack? I don't know. They were like one of the bigger viners at the time. There was like nine of yeah. them, like the Greers. Yeah, them. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to say, I probably remember them, but it was also probably when I was like a freshman, yeah, sophomore we in high school. Young. But they were like one of the tops and they went had went to Westside, which was a school, uh, my high school that I transferred actually my senior year, but they yeah. went to my old school. Yeah. And um, they remember me doing music. So when they had got cracking, they were like, yo, we want to make music. Yeah. Um, would you do a song with us? And I was like, yeah, sure. So we d- we went to a studio in Omaha. We made a song. And till this date, like that song, like right away, um, I think like in three months, it went gold. And that yeah. was before like d- digital streaming platforms. Yeah. So it was really good. Um, we did that. And then they went on a whole tour of House of Blues shows. Yeah. And they wanted me to open up. Yeah. So this was like right after college. Like I came home probably for like four months. Yeah. We made the song, did well, went on the tour. I was opening up, just playing like all the music yeah. that I had. And that's when I started gaining like a social media presence. Yeah. And that kind of helped me on Instagram and Twitter. Yeah. And then um, after that, I went on my own tour and did like 400, 500 cap venues. Okay. And did yeah. really well. And then. Um, then I was then I had like enough money to kind of like stay out here, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I I uh, I moved out here like nineteen twenty. Sweet, yeah. that's awesome. Also, I love your chain. Appreciate it. I was it. like looking at it. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah, it's a com- it was a it's a cool company. Huh? It's called Halfway Dead. Yeah, I wish my name was shorter. 
<laughs> is, uh, t- I like it Trev. with the three. <laughs> you could do a you could do a, a T R E V. Yeah, can we get it, Trev? Jamie? Can we get me a chain? But can we uh, make Trev? Red and Link pay for it? We need yes. a tr- yeah, we need I a will, Trev chain. Yeah, I'm gonna type it into studio f- facility request. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Can we ask? Can we get? Can we get Terrence on it? Someone? Tell him Skate said. <laughs> yeah, tell him Skate said I need a chain <laughs> for my show. <laughs> um, no, that that's that's super cool. So, like, are you enjoying it? Do you love what you do? I love it. That's awesome. I love it, man. Like, that's the one thing that is just like, I would rather, you know, be chasing my dreams and doing music than doing anything else, you know? So, because I just, I was the kid in school that just, I just wasn't that interested, you know? Yeah. I was really, if if I'm being honest, like, I was just going to school to play basketball so I could, like, go check into the game, you know, and get by. So, yeah. Um. Not to say that school isn't good, because I I think it really is good just yeah. for, you know, making your brain a lot more, yeah. you know, full. But, um, yeah, man, I just, there was just something that just I just wasn't too excited about it. No. So yeah. It's funny that you say that, because I kind of had the same experience. I just didn't end up going to college, because I was thinking, like, I didn't really know what I wanted to do after high school. Um, and I was like, well, I could go to like a junior college or something like a D3 yep. and like try and play basketball. And I was like, but I feel like I'd be going just to play basketball. Exactly. Like, if I go and play basketball and study economics or whatever, like I don't want to do that. Well, a lot of people know? go to college to, to find what they want to do. Yeah. And some, a lot of people find what they want to yeah. do, you know, but others, I feel like if they don't find that there. And they're kind of left like, okay, well, what what do I like, you yeah. know? And and usually those people are interested in art or, yeah. you know, other things. So and it's that also was like, kind of my thing. Yeah, it's different for everyone, I feel like. Because, I mean, you know, you moved out to L.A. like when you were 19 and you became a really successful musician. And that's awesome. And, like, you know, I moved to L.A. when I was 18, whatever. And, like, I ended up getting this job here, yep. which has been really great and I'm really thankful. But, like... You know, my girlfriend, she has a degree in biology from Pepperdine. She's insanely smart. And we need more people like that. Yeah. Though, you know? But she also, like, doesn't know what she wants to do with that yet. She's not sure. And she, like, I hate it. She always, like, compares herself to me. She's like, well, you're, like, so put together. And I'm like, one, I'm She's like, but you have, like, you know, a job and, like, you're very successful. And I was like, but everyone's it's different. different. Though. It's different, though, too, with, with, everyone, this, with yeah. what we do is, like, you know, you never know because, like, there's months where you'll get a bunch of money and there's yeah. months where you don't get any money, yeah. you know? Whereas, you know, you, you go to a, go get a job like that, like, you have a steady income and it's yeah. always coming in, you yeah. know? So I think that's the thing about just being, like, an independent entrepreneur is, like, it's a risk, too, yeah. you know? There's it's a, a lot of times where it's, like, you're going to be down in yeah. the gutter and then there's a lot of times you're going to be up, so. Yeah. and I, It's a roller coaster. If you're out there and you're like 22 years old and you don't know what you want to do, that's okay. Yeah. Like, facts. it's okay. I can't you, believe how much pressure they put on kids. And I like know. the kids, even my little brother, he's, he's 21. He just turned 21. And he's like, even my mom will have conversations like, hey, you need to talk to Stu. Like, he's not yeah. really doing much. He doesn't know what he wants to do. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, 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 I'd be living with you too right now. Like, yeah. I, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do, you know? Yeah. So, um, I think that's the most important thing is just like taking time to find what you love mm-hmm. and like you can try different things you can go down different routes like you can explore and while find the young. thing that makes you happy yeah while you're young like I know so many people who are like very successful and who love what they do now but they're like yeah I didn't know what I wanted to do until I was like 28 and then For I sure. found the thing that I'm at now and I love it and I'm really good at it and like you, there's no timeline. There's no think, timeline for yeah. you like to be like, you have to know what you want to do and who you want to be by 23 or you're... There's too much pressure on kids right now. It is. It's a mm-hmm. lot of pressure. And social media doesn't make it easier too because they're yeah. seeing like people that are successful and they're like, yeah, well, some of those people have been putting in 10 years too. You just see yeah. what just the success right now, you know? Yeah. So It is crazy too. I feel like, you know, the like era of social media, like, there's just so much comparison and everyone does it. Like everyone. when you see like these people on social media, it's like all you do is see the good side of people and the happy side of people, and the successful side of people. And then you just compare them to you and you're like, wow, I want to be that. I want to do that. And mm-hmm. it's like, you don't know what anyone's going through or, or, or what they did to get to where they are or even how happy they are. Like there could be 100%. people that are extremely successful and very unhappy. Yeah. Like it's just about doing what you love and finding what you love and, and I think that that's something that kind of social media and like this day and age of like media is, is really like warped. I think it's just like, it's it has. It really toxic. And I, I feel like 
Well, you're 22. So yeah, we're basically same like, you know, era. It's yeah. like we were kind of, we just kind of missed that. Yeah. I feel like. Yeah. Like the kids that are like, you know, in high school right now, it's, that's rough. Like, you know, cause the, I don't, I don't know what I would like. I can't imagine. Yeah. I remember back like when Instagram and Twitter first started getting popular was like kind of when I was in high school. So I didn't really hit that, but I, yeah, I mean, we kind of just barely like, we're, yeah. I feel like we got one foot in and yeah. one foot up, out, yeah. you know? So I couldn't imagine growing up and being in high school right now. I feel like that would just be. Imagine social media, like at the peak in high school and everybody's like, some people got followers and stuff and they think they're like cooler than you and you think they're cooler than you. And you're like, no, man, maybe I'm not that cool. Yeah. You know, my (laughs) mental health was already (laughs) up in high school without (laughs) having like social media to worry about. Like, you know, (laughs) imagine that. Like, no, I mean, I think it's telling like in the way that like, you know, just like mental illness and depression is like so high in younger people today it's like it's yeah they didn't they didn't do enough studies or anything to like be like okay if we release this well we need these to yeah. help kids too you know and I it's think that's one thing they need yeah i don't want to be like a boomer either where i'm like oh social media nah. your phones are like rotting nah. your brain like that's not it it's like a very it's a lot deeper than that and like the way that social media exists and the way that social media exists to try and get you to stay on it. Mm-hmm. Like it's the the companies and the platforms themselves that are like intrinsically toxic, I think, in the way that they market, market and, and advertise yeah. to youths to try and make them feel like they have to be on it all the time yep. to be cool. And then it's, yeah. I mean, even the, do- they say what, they say like the your dopamine levels rise when you get likes and yeah. stuff like that, right? Yeah. Like, but it's also brought like people together too, which yeah. is like crazy. Like without social media, like, I couldn't have made some of the relationships um, or like got some of the features that I've got without yeah. hitting up people through social media. It's like yeah. somebody all the way across the world I could get a feature with just by hitting them up on Instagram. Yeah. You know, which is sure. which is cool too. So there's a lot of perks to it too. Yeah. It's there's just, a lot of positives, some negatives too. I think that's like most things, but. I think everything in moderation. Yeah. You know. For sure. No, except I Except mean, for TikTok. Except for TikTok. <laughs> God. Um, <laughs> it's funny. I talked to my dad about that because like I'm still friends with like a lot of my closest friends from high school that I've known since I was in like first grade and we game together all the time. But like, I mean, social media has like allowed us to all stay connected like mm-hmm. all the time. And it is a really cool thing in that way where like my dad is like, yeah, I don't talk to any of my best friends from high school or barely at all because, you know, when we left, when we graduated and we went you our separate go ways. You somewhere you can't even communicate with them. Yeah, that yeah. was it. You went your separate ways and then you didn't see them unless like maybe you were home visiting and you mm-hmm. happened to bump into them or something. But now it's like, I have all my closest friends and, you know, I follow them on social media and I talk to them on a regular basis through it and I can see like what they're up to and yeah, check in with cool. them. And so that's one thing that I really like about it. I don't know. You're right. It's positives and negatives. It's in moderation. It's good, but. Yeah, it would be tough to be a, a high school right now, I think. <laughs> That'd be tough. That would be hard. Or middle school. Even yeah. middle school. Even middle school. Even maybe more so middle school. You know? I feel like there's even more pressure in middle school to be, like, cool. Like, I feel like once I got into high school and, like, I kind of figured out, like, eh, it's not really yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not yeah, really Yeah, middle school, deal. you're really trying to be cool. Yeah. In high school, you're like, what's well, cool? Every time we have a guest on, Jamie does, like, a bunch of research into people. And uh, writes down a bunch of facts, and then I get to sit here and read them and go like, oh, that's cool. What fact is next? What fact is <laughs> next? What fact about skate is next? Well, there is a video that I wanted to ask you about of you doing a stage dive. Oh, yeah. What is that like? Is there like fear? What if people don't catch you? So, what if it's like the first scene of School of Rock So here, Jack Black just jumps in and it Yeah, runs? exactly. So here's what you don't see in the video is the preparation for that, you know? So yeah. like... Like before, you can't just like because I've seen even like really popping artists like just try to run out and just jump in the crowd. Like, bro, like you're gonna hurt, you're not gonna, yeah. One, you're not gonna tell them that you're about to do it first. Like, you're just gonna jump and just expect like people to just (laughs) that's what I thought you did. This is just an outsider looking in, (laughs) nah. So, like, it's preparation. Like, okay, when you're planning a show, um, I've just had a lot of tour experience to where like I've learned how to like prepare for certain things and just like interact with the crowd and have yeah. crowd control and um to where like if I'm doing like I did uh like three tours with Wiz yeah and um those were like big like outdoor amphitheaters yeah, and, yeah, yeah. you know ten thousand people so I had to learn just how to control a fan base that like doesn't know me you know yeah and um so I learned a lot of things and the last like thing was to like 
just make sure like once once you get them once you get them like there's even things like so i'll stop it and be in and kind of be like okay this is how the song goes i need y'all to repeat after me yeah right so when when i get them to repeat that and then i play the song yeah and everybody that's in the back can hear everybody in the front singing that yeah they're just going to ultimately sing that too yeah and that just puts a like perception in their mind that oh okay like this guy people know his stuff yeah yeah, like, yeah you know even though they don't yeah you know and then after that like you got them yeah you know so once you once you get like where you got them yeah then like i could be like all right i'm finna jump in the crowd but i'll i'll let them know like let yo them know, yeah y'all gonna catch me like i'll, I'll single out like a, yeah. a group of people like are y'all gonna catch me yeah like Y'all don't look like you're gonna catch me, so yeah. I'll go over here. Yeah, like, put, and I'll be like, "Yo, put your hands up in the air." Survey, yeah, you know. What's your uh, What's your squat max? Yeah, you know, like mm. let me okay, that's let work. me know. <laughs> but um, yeah. no, nah, if there's enough people, if there's enough people crowded up front, like, yeah. All they have to do is put their hands up. Yeah. Like, well, you've seen the just, videos of people where they do like the two fingers and like everyone working together lifts them up. It's like a <laughs> camp thing where they're like, oh, that's oh, different yeah. though. That, yeah, it's, it's kind of the same idea of like a lot of people working together can lift something up. But of course. That so, was such yeah, a cool I'll be video. like, yo, put your hands up, put your hands up. Come on, I'm about to jump. Yeah. And, you know, I haven't had a bad experience yet good that video is so cool i couldn't get i literally watched it like 10 times because the way you're just like being held up in the crowd and then you're still going hard i was like that's the coolest yeah, thing it's ever fun, <laughs> it's fun that's gonna be me at mythicon jamie oh my <laughs> god i do a stage dive at mythicon. what's mythicon mythicons are, are um having a yeah so we're doing a convention like uh you know like like uh vidcon or whatever yeah. like stuff like that so we decided to host our own that's like all mythical themes so it's in austin Sick. texas in october uh, for all of those of you listening, but all yeah, right. we like rented like a big ranch outside of Austin for like a weekend, and so That'd we're like sick. turning it into like a whole like kind of mythical themed town. Might and have to pop like, out there. Yeah, you want to come out? Come on, yeah. sick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mythical fest. Mythicon tickets. Mythicon. <laughs> Mythicon fest. It's gonna be a fun time. It's gonna be pretty crazy. We have like a there's like a tattoo parlor that we have coming in, so people awesome. are gonna be able to get like tattoos and stuff. Harry and, Potter tattoos. Yeah, beer garden. A lot of beer. There's gonna be a lot of beer. Really be sick. So you're under Wiz Khalifa's label, right? Management. Management. Okay, so his management. Yeah. So is there like pressure? Like, do you feel pressure just knowing that you're kind of under that name to be like, oh, like I have to live up to this? Uh, no, nah, not really. Like I'd, I'd actually met Wiz um, before I even had got a deal with him. Yeah. We, we got in the studio randomly through a producer named Ricky P. Okay. And he's a producer on Taylor Gang. Yeah. And... Um, we were already in the studio for like, I don't know, hours. It was like 3 a.m. And he was like, yo, Wiz is going to pull up. Is that cool? I was like, is that cool? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I guess. Like, I get, yeah, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> nah, yeah, and growing up, like, listening to Wiz, you yeah. know, that was the era. Like, I'd seen him in concert in Omaha during the Cushion Orange Juice tour, so. Yeah. Um, he pulls up at like 3 a.m. And um, he was, we, we were already playing some music in there. And he was like, yo, this is this is hard, like. And he was like, can I play some beats? And I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> You're like, I guess. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah, I guess sure, put, yeah. a, put a beat on. I guess Wiz Khalifa. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so he put a couple of beats on. And I think like the second one, it was a sledger and beat. And he was like, yo, I was like, this is hard. He's like, you like it? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, all right, go ahead. Like, And, and I've heard multiple stories now after, you know, being uh, with Taylor Gang. Yeah. That he's done that, you know, multiple times. Like, yo, go in there. Yeah. You know, that's like his first little, like, yeah. yo, go in little, there. A little tester. Yeah. Little test so yeah. I went in there and I laid like a verse and a hook. And uh, that was our first song. He actually dropped it on SoundCloud. It's called Role Model. Oh, really? That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's called Role Model because I was like, yo, this is like a role model. And yeah. I'm like, yeah. let me just write about like, you know what's actually i'm experiencing right now yeah and um so that was the first time we met and then he kept inviting me back to the studio so um i kept going and then will started coming into the studio sessions randomly yeah and uh i was looking for management at the time i'd had like i'd started my own uh record label yeah and did a joint venture with atlantic records okay and then i was looking for a management and will was like yo if you're looking for somebody like you know i would love to take you on yeah and that's kind of how we started okay 
That's, got into business. That's so cool. It was sick, man. That's yeah. crazy. I mean, <laughs> what come, a story. Imagine true, yeah. just like you're in the studio and then like an idol and a legend in the yeah. industry comes it was by. Very, it was and very it's like, humbling. hey, drop a verse. Like, it was very humbling. It was cool, man. Like That's really cool. Well, congratulations. I mean, that's... Yeah, it was fun. That's awesome. And then, uh, you know, we dropped a record um, on the new project, Last Day on Earth. It's yeah, called yeah. Girl Next Door. Yeah, yeah. It's actually my biggest song right now. Yeah. Um, it's doing well. It's yeah. doing good. It's a good and song. You should listen to it. That. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Dubs is on there too. Have you heard of Dubs? Do you, do you know? Do you listen to any EDM or house music? I listen to like a very little bit of EDM. Okay, so I mean, they had like a really really big record. I can't remember what it's called, but it's like that. Yeah, I I think I might know what you're talking about. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. I think I, all of them kind of go like the, that. Yeah, though. I was going to say, I feel like I'll hear an EDM song and then like I never remember who it's by. Same. Or like same. who the, But when you rehear it, you're like, yeah. oh. Or when you look up the people, you're like, yeah. oh, that's who that is. You yeah. Know? I, but, I can't just like point it out and be like. But yeah, there was a, I had already had Wiz on the song and I played it for dubs. And they're like, can I add like some production? And I was like, yeah, sure. And they're, and they're like, you, we, we can add the dubs feature on it. So it was cool to have like both of those lanes yeah. on there too. And it was something that was different for dubs too. Yeah. Because it was, you know, obviously it had like live rock instrumentation. Yeah. And uh, that's why we had them like, because they, they actually used to be a band. Oh, really? They used to be in a punk band yeah, okay. back in the day. So they were like all for it. They were like yeah. sick. And um, so one of them was playing drums and one of them was playing guitar in the video. And yeah. it was cool. It was, it was really cool just to have everybody <clears throat> yeah. involved in it. Kind of a whole mesh of yeah, like, and then we had like yeah. we had like Summer Rain in the video. Yeah. We had uh, um, Alex in the video, yeah. who's like six skateboard, like yeah, one of the coldest. Alex Miller, he's yeah, like yeah. insane. So it was cool. We brought like a bunch of people together, and um, it turned out dope. Yeah, that's really cool. I want to know more about you. So I this is a, this is just off the top of my head. <laughs> so get ready. It's probably gonna be <laughs> stupid. I just want to know, like, is there anything that you really like to do or your favorite things that like not a lot of people know about like do you have any just like weird hobbies like you collect stamps that's a terrible example but anything i like sci-fi yeah, yeah sci-fi and thriller and uh so what are your like favorite sci-fi movies then um i liked um what's the show uh i don't know i can't think of it it's a it's a netflix show come netflix on, show come on skate Oh, is it Black Mirror? Yeah, what Black Mirror? How'd you just pull that okay, out of my head? So this is it's Wait, on. It's, it's on. How did you it's know? On it? sheet, it's I on think. the facts. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. As far as TV goes, really loves Black Mirror slash Game of Thrones. Hey, the research <laughs> is on point. <laughs> She's so good. <laughs> the research is on point. The amount of times though that I've like we've had a guest on and I'll say something <laughs> and they're like, "How did you know about that? <laughs> like, where did you find that?" And Jamie's just like, "Ah, do my research." Yeah, yeah. They're good. Classic. Yeah, Jamie. Black Mirror is, is is like huge for me. Black Mirror freaks me out. I love it. It's I, such I, a I good did. show, but it freaks me out. <laughs> yeah, I just like like seeing like that's like oh okay i know where his brain went there you know yeah you d have you seen the stuff about cern what cern have you heard of cern i don't think so <laughs> we, not, we might not go down that rabbit hole <laughs> cern is like something that they just uh so they're they're using particles and they're they're shooting particles it's a company okay and they're shooting particles at each other like a bunch of protons neutrons yeah and, and um electrons and uh to basically they're shooting them at like light speed trillions of volts and yeah. underneath the ground and it's a real company they just live streamed it on july 5th so it's the day okay. after july 4th yeah and there's just a bunch of people saying like conspiracies and stuff saying like they're basically opening a portal they're trying to create the big bang theory so they're trying to create <laughs> the big bang because they're shooting all this all these particles together to create something that's that's and sick. people are saying they're opening like uh, portals, like dark yeah. energy. And no, that's stuff. good. That's yeah. what scientists should be doing more of. <laughs> really screwed up things that have you catastrophic. Know? You feel me? Events. And that's yeah. what they're saying. They're like, yo, after this, I don't know. There's there's crazy conspiracies. If you go down the road, it's yeah. like 
supposedly like, in 2012. Because things can't get more screwed up, right? Oh yeah, no. Yeah, might as well. We're already particles. doing. Yeah, we're yeah. already doing great. You yeah. Know? <laughs> I I love this title of this article about it. it says TikTokers fear CERNs. Oh yeah. CERNs it's big. large hadron collider will bring about intergalactic calamity. It's, I don't know. I just like that phrase. It's very. People been watching it's so deep. Stranger Things. It's deep. But that that's what it is. <laughs> Like, yeah. Why would they want to make that real? Stranger Things is because they are because it's sick. My thing is, is like I feel like it's like they've been saying like, oh, the movies are fake and the news is real, but it's kind of the opposite. Yeah, <laughs> you know, everything they kind of put in the movies is, has been kind of ends up being real. Yeah, here's the thing: if in the next ten years something really strange happens and we'll a portal to we'll another dimension, gets, yeah, it will know to blame CERN, but also that's cool, you know, like. I could do a little spice in my life. Things are fun, but they could be more <laughs> but fun. You're not going to be able to use the portal. Why not? Because because CERN owns it. Well, and a bunch of rich, wealthy people own it. They're not yeah. going to let you go back in time. Okay, but they're, they're going to go back in time. They're going to need to test it on someone though. That's like the whole plot of Resident Evil and the they Umbrella get, Academy is that they test it on regular people yeah. and then they cause the Umbrella zombie Academy outbreak. is cool too. Yeah, yeah, that's a good show. Um, I don't show. know, man. It's crazy. This changed d- directions really fast. I love <laughs> it. What's your favorite though? TV show? <laughs> and now we're talking about alternate universe. <laughs> thank you so much for hey, coming on the show, you, man. I had thank a good you time. for the conversation. Yeah, it was cool, man. This is so was, much fun. It was sick to just be able to talk about cool. Yeah. D- please tell people where they can find you, social media. Tell people what to go listen to. Obviously, all of your music, but your new album stuff. Feel cool. Free yeah. Last away. last Day on Earth uh, is the album it just dropped um, featuring Wiz Khalifa, Dubs, Rook, Swaco, The Child, um, Good Charlotte, Sum yeah. 41. It's out right now. Uh, SK and then the letter or the number eight. So SK8, Skate Everywhere. Yeah. On all platforms. Yeah. So the album is really good. I actually listened to the whole thing through today. I I loved it. It was really good. So go check it out. Follow Skate on Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. Keep up with what he's doing. You're a super cool guy. At least I think. So for now. Thank you for coming (laughs) on the show. (laughs) Thank you, bro. (laughs) Thank you. Well, everyone, that was Skate. Um, please go check out his album Last Day on Earth it's really good it's got like a really cool blend of like a ton of different genres There, I genuinely think there's something for everybody in there like I was listening to it today really enjoyed it go check him out Instagram, Twitter SK8 the number S, the letters SK followed by the number 8 Skate uh, as in Avril Lavigne Skate er boy um, oh, love that song yeah great song but that's Skate in the same way that it's spelled in the song title uh, Jamie, how, how, how was it? Did you enjoy our conversation? I did. I really liked when you got into like the growing up into like growing up with this, like social media, you guys were like on the cusp because I felt like I, cause I'm a little bit older. So I felt like yeah. I was like really kind of on the cusp, like the yeah. most, I didn't have a smartphone or Instagram till I graduated high school. Okay. Yeah. So I was like, I always think about that. I'm like, what are kids today doing? So I thought that was so interesting and yeah. the conspiracy theories. Cause I just a sucker for those. Yeah. I think I got my first phone when i was like either a freshman or sophomore in high school um and my first phone was a smartphone like i didn't have a flip phone or anything before that but like it was when around when i first got like my driver's license um you or like my learner's flip phone no i didn't have a flip phone oh, my man. first my first phone was the iphone 5c um but i it was like when i got my driver's license and i was gonna be like out of the house more my parents wanted to be able to like contact me and stuff and so it probably was around like summer after my freshman year or like during my sophomore year um and yeah i mean i remember like having those ad like early days of instagram and twitter and like back then it was just kind of a yeah. silly joke thing like we didn't there wasn't a lot of stock in it i had a facebook but i never used it but like i mean yeah growing up today like in that era where i feel like people put so much stock in your social media and like how many followers you have like how many likes you get and, and like that like oh i couldn't handle it i can't yeah. i can barely handle it now and i'm like an adult and I shouldn't care. Well, and I don't really care, but like it's, yeah. Well, because imagine being in middle school and like if there's bullies, normally the bullies stop once you go home, but now they ha- they can reach you. Cyberbullying, Cyber I believe bullying. is what that's referred to as, yeah. Um, but no, I thought it was really cool and he was a cool dude. He was, he was really nice. He was, he was really fun to talk to. It was a good time. I enjoyed it. All right, everybody, it's time for a new little little segment that we're going to be doing here um, because I found that I have a lot of knowledge. I'm a very smart person. I'm kind of a genius, honestly. I don't know what my IQ is, but it's probably genius level of intellect. Um, 
And I have a lot of very great advice. So I'm going to start giving you guys some tips. This is Trevor's tips. That's right. Alliteration. That's what alliteration is. It's when words that are consecutive in a sentence have the same letter at the start of it or the same sound. Okay. That's how smart I am. I know what alliteration is. And today's tip from Trevor, me, uh, actually is a useful tip. Shockingly. Oh, man. I know. It's a useful <laughs> tip. I know. Get ready for this, Jamie. If you ever start a fire in a pan in your kitchen, that is what's known as an oil fire. So when you heat up oil really hot, sometimes it will catch fire. And if you do that while you're cooking, don't put it in the sink and put water on it. Because all that's going to do is make it worse. The fire's going to flare up. It's actually crazy how often I see like clips of this happen on YouTube and social media. Someone will be like in their kitchen cooking and oh, the pan catches on fire and they just run it to the sink and then they put the sink on and it just gets bigger. If you start a fire in a pan in your kitchen while you're cooking, there's a genuine tip. Turn off the heat, okay? Take it off of heat. So like if it's on a burner, turn off that burner, put the pan on a different burner that's not on and then cover it. Because the oxygen, fire needs oxygen. So an oil fire, if you just cover it with something like a pot lid or something, it's going to eat itself up. The fire will go out because there's no oxygen to fill it, to fuel it. And you don't put it in the sink and the fire will go down and you can throw out, who knows, maybe the food's still good. You can still eat it. Maybe, I don't know. That's for you to assess once you've done it. Don't put kitchen oil fires in the sink. If you start a fire in a pan, don't put it in the sink. That's Trevor's tip for today. And it's good. It is a good tip. You Thank can, you. Then you can pretend if it's not too big of a fire that you were just trying to flambe something. Exactly. You can Gordon Ramsay it. Give it a, yeah. If there's a, actually, that's the tip. If you start a fire in a pan, just start shaking the pan around like they do in the cooking shows or like when they, you see like a B-roll of a restaurant, just start flipping it around and then it's, it's going to look cool. And then you might burn your house down, but at least you'll look cool. I was going to say this tip kind of. No, the tip went off the rails. <laughs> Listen to the first part, not the second part. Thank you, everyone, for listening to Trevor Talks Too Much. We've got new episodes out every Tuesday, wherever you get your podcasts. we got the video versions coming out the following Monday over on YouTube.com slash Trevor Talks Too Much. Uh, but yeah, go follow the socials. Catch me. Catch all the other mythical stuff. Mythical Kitchen. Go check out Mythical Pods on TikTok. we got some fun clips going up over there. I believe that's all the things that I have to say contractually. No, I'm kidding. It's not contractually. I just say it because I like it. Um, but yeah, have a great day, everyone. Go don't start any fires in your kitchen. Ideally, don't do it. Hey, if you think that this podcast is funny, boy, do I have another podcast that you probably also think is funny. It's called Best Friends Back. All right. Stevie's podcast that she hosts with her childhood best friend, Nagin, wherever you get your podcasts. Head over to psych.la and drop in code TT2M made you look at checkout. That is TT, the number two M made you look at checkout. You can enjoy 10% off your whole order. So go check it out at psych.la.